white glue, and toilet paper. What in the world are we making today? Hey, you guys. Okay, so believe it or not, we're recording two um, statement jewelry making videos simultaneously. So this is what you're going to need for this one. So remember I showed you the... Um, white glue I got from the Dollar Tree. Now you can use this or Elmer's white glue for the school glue, totally doesn't matter. Dollar Tree, I'm gonna need a um, sponsorship in these videos. <laughs> Just kidding, right? <laughs> but I wanted to figure out what can we make super inexpensive but really gorgeous and I was inspired by a video I saw where the lady had, um, like I had done some paper earrings in the past but she literally used toilet paper, right? And you're like, unused toilet paper before anybody's like, ew, right? <laughs> So we're going to use toilet paper and that's what's going to make like a mache, right? You're going to need your jump rings if you want to have attachments and findings and things hanging down. I already showed you everything in my Michaels haul that I bought. You're going to need some earring hooks and beads of your choice. These are some of the beads I'm probably going to be using. I'm a little undecided, but you know, all this gorgeousness. Maybe to be dangling or glued down. I'm totally unsure of the direction, but I know what we're doing, right? So you're also gonna need some cardboard. I just took apart an oatmeal box, but when you take it apart, um, just be sure to not tear it all up, right? Because you can make so much jewelry. I mean, this is at least two pair of earrings, right? If you were to cut this in half, cut that in half, two small earrings, two big earrings, bases and all that jazz. So don't go tearing stuff up like a bull in a china shop, right? So the other thing that we wanna find and that we wanna use is like a template. So I'm just gonna use this circular template from one of the wooden pieces we normally use. And I'm just gonna use a pen that I got. I don't even know where I got a pen from. Let me make sure this is a good circle. I don't think it necessarily has to be perfect, but we wanna make um, a, some state, a statement pendant and we wanna make a pair of earrings to go with it. So I'm just gonna trace the circle and I'm gonna go ahead and do two since we're making stuff, why not? Matter of fact, I'll probably do three just in case I want to have a, um, can I fit down there? I'm trying to see if I can press it one more, one more again. Let's see. Yep. Can I tell you I'm starting to feel better? I can I feel like I can breathe today. I have been on 10, right? Level 10. I know you probably have too. And today I was like, I really wish I could take off, but I just have a lot of work to get done. But it ended up working out where my client got rescheduled. So I was able to sit and make jewelry with you guys. And when I tell you, I literally feel a weight being lifted just from creating jewelry with you guys. I mean, what the word say? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Cause I'm like, I've been praying. I'm like, Lord, I need your help. Just get the stress off me. And so that's why I had started lifting hand weights. And so I mainly just lift weights and do like a little quick workout while dinner's cooking. I literally lift, because I want to work on back fat. Ugh, I cannot stand bra bulge, right? It is getting on the last nerve. I know somebody can relate and somebody can't relate, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, I want that stuff off my back. So while I'm cooking dinner, because um, now we have an open kitchen kind of floor plan, so I can talk to my husband, lift weights while he's over there pretending to listen to me. <laughs> right and work out in the kitchen so that's helped me feel a lot better um just to maintain and manage stress and then when it starts getting warmer i love to go walking like i love to be outside walking and i don't easily sweat unless too much information but if i'm working out nine times out of ten i'm not gonna sweat so i have to really do a lot to get my heart rate up in order for that to be the case and but that's how your body releases toxins right Maybe we need to have a spa built onto our house. Somebody tell my husband that, that we need a whole spa built out that, right? So I'm gonna move that stuff over to the side. So here we're just cutting out our circles, our circlios. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a glue and water substance, like a, basically making paper mache out of the toilet paper and the white glue. And it's gonna harden. And it's gonna give us these really cute um, pendants that we can work with and we can design any way that we want. 
So I'm excited to see how it's gonna turn out, but I was really interested in doing a recycled jewelry project. When I say recycled, meaning that might not be the best word, an inexpensive jewelry project, something that looks high end, super cute and gorgeous, but with items from the Dollar Tree. So that way, in case we ever find ourselves, maybe, you know, I meet a lot of women a lot of times that say they don't have a lot of money to get started, but I mean, give me a break. We have cardboard in our house, everybody does. If you got a cereal box, pull that plastic bag of cereal out, put it in a Ziploc bag, in full, just Ziploc bag, drop it and keep the cardboard box. Use a template. You can use a glass to make a template and start cutting out some earrings and jewelry pieces. Everybody in mama's got some toilet paper. If not, go get some from your neighbor. Hey, can I have that toilet paper, <laughs> right? We made jewelry out of toilet paper rolls. I don't know if you've seen that video. I'll try to remember to post it here or as the next video that pops up just in case. So now we've got our molds, but anyway, so $1.25, think of how much jewelry you could make, as much cardboard as you can possibly find, and then as much toilet paper as you can possibly find, you can make jewelry very inexpensively. The most expensive part is probably gonna be the jump rings and the earring wires, but you've got this. So this is gonna be some earrings and a pendant. So what we wanna do now is we wanna start um, just taking apart the toilet paper and tearing it in squares, right? Because we're basically gonna layer it. So I'm not going to keep you on here watching me tear apart toilet paper squares, but we don't want them to be too heavy, right? But what we're going to do is after we saturate and wet this up, we're going to squish it onto our base and then we're going to let it dry. We're going to put it in the oven to dry just to speed up time. That's what the person recommended. I think she said for 20 minutes. She may have said for two hours, but that's kind of long for paper, but I don't know. We'll figure that out as we go along. I'll go verify the, inf the intel, the information and get back to you. So go ahead and start tearing off your little toilet paper squares. Look, so we're gonna make a set of earrings and one pendant, right? So two earrings and a pendant. Look at all this toilet paper. We could be making earrings till Jesus comes back. You got this girl. Get you some paints. We about to hook this all the way up. I bet y'all are gonna be way more gorgeous than mine. Oh my God, cause God has made so many creative people. So. Let's go get this done, be right back. Go get your glue, get you some water because we're gonna need a glue and water ratio mixture, okay? Okay, so there is a large amount of glue in this container. So I thought about adding water to this one, but I don't know if it'll actually get watered down enough, but I'm not sure what else I have that I could squeeze something into. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. Let's see. Oh, there's something. So there's some Mod Podge. So what I'm probably gonna do is add some of my white glue in here to the Mod Podge and then add water the rest of the way in here. Try not to make a mess. So I have all of these squares um, pulled out, pulled apart. Thank God they're perforated. So don't even need glue, I mean scissors, right? You could use your child's scissors. So we're talking about how can you inexpensively make earrings from items you have at home, but we want it to be a really high-end look, okay? So this is statement jewelry, high-end look. So I'm gonna go, I basically filled it halfway with the rest of, with white glue, added to some Mod Podge that was already in there, and I got this, I think, from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna go fill the rest of it with water, warm water, and shake it up just so it'll get diluted together. Okay, so we have our glue mixture. This isn't just Mod Podge, so just in case you're skipping forward, right? You know, because we all do that, we skim. Like, how can I skim past here, right? <laughs> Let's see if it'd be better if I had the white paper over here. It might be better for the lighting. Okay, so we have our Mod Podge mixed with some white glue, mixed with some warm water, because I wanted it to mix really well. And you should probably have some wet wipes on your table, but I don't do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> so the reason why I didn't have the white paper to begin with is because we're gonna start wetting the um, tissue and that's just gonna mess all that paper up unnecessarily that I'm gonna wanna use later on. So I'm just gonna sit that to the side. So we're gonna saturate the um, tissue layer it on top of each other, right? And what I'm gonna do 
Ooh, that got kind of torn up. So, oh, I like it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it on top of our cardboard paper. Oh, and it makes me shady like. I normally don't like messy crafts, but I kind of, this is, I like this. This is therapeutic. <laughs> so let's put some more. So this is going to get messy, FYI. And you determine how thick you want it to be, but keep in mind, these are earrings that once they dry, they'll probably be just a smidge heavy only because the paper is drying. And then the other thing I forgot to tell you that you need is a paper towel. So we're gonna need to get a paper towel to make the ridges around the earring. So let's pick that up. And what we wanna do is just make sure, you know, that we have the proper amount of thickness and we gotta match up our other earring. Oh, and look, I noticed that when I got it wet that it bent up a little bit, meaning the, um, what you call it, the cardboard. So we'll probably want to sit something on the cardboard once it's near drying in the oven so that it will lay flat. Okay, so we're just spreading our paper mache our glue, our white glue mixture, all over everything. I can see how, why this would dry firmly and have like structure to it. So that's gonna be really cool. And again, if after it dries, it's heavy, heavier than you want, you can make these clip-ons, right? Yeah, basically it's just mache. That's cool. I have learned some new stuff today and I've been making jewelry for forever. So I learned the hot glue does not like silver molds or aluminum molds. You might have heard the oven back there. I don't know why that decided it wanted to stick. Why is it cutting it? It has started drying already. Oh, probably because I had glue down there already. So. So I'm definitely gonna sit these off to the side on a plastic container that you can't see, but sit it on something that it's not gonna stick to. And then make sure your edges are covered really well because we can always trim off the excess. I gotta go get the paper towel anyway. So I wonder why this one folded up but the other one didn't. It's weird. I'm gonna make sure all your cardboard is covered up on the edges. I was off camera, so I write that. We can always trim that stuff off, so. I set that over to the side. Now, I wanna go ahead and do this one, which is gonna be the pendant for the middle of the necklace. And so, we're gonna go ahead and get that. Had a little coagulation in my Mod Podge. Ew, that's kind of grody to the max, I said no. Ew, uh, why is it doing that? That is so cool. Oh, maybe because when I mix the, I don't know, something about that was fun to me, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so maybe because when I mix the water in, in there, maybe it started coagulating. So this is gonna be the pendant. So we're gonna need a little bit more of your toilet paper mache mixture. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all gushed up on the pendant. Trust me, your hands are going to like working with this. It feels like making biscuits. Okay, so we're going to get it all smushed out. 
but we want to keep it flat so it's not too heavy, right? But it's going to be a really pretty pendant. Let's do a couple more layers. just so we can make sure we have enough to cover everything up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our paper towel to make like a rope, to give it like a pipe edge and give it a finish. We'll probably do the same with the earrings as well. And we want to make sure this is even because I noticed I was getting a little heavy along the top. So you want it to be even all the way around. Yeah, when I'm riding in the car showing houses, I'm looking at jewelry making videos. Sometimes I'm watching my own videos to see where I could have done a better job. So let me go get a paper towel so we can make the rope edging for the pendant and the earrings. Be right back. Okay, you guys, keep in mind, if you don't like this, it's just a paper towel. I'm going to cut it in strips just to make it easier to work with. And if you don't like your hands getting all messy and messed up, you know, you can use gloves, right? So we're gonna take the paper towel and we're just gonna twist it, right? Because we want it to be like an edge, like a piping around our piece of jewelry. This might be a little bit thicker than we want. So of course, judge yours as to how you want it to be. But it's basically going to give you a finished edge and we're going to have to wet it so when you get to the end of it and i probably don't even need all of this but so let's put that down there and get it wet so that way it won't fight with us and try to unravel or what have you Ooh, and look how pretty you could do if you wanted to do a braided one. That'd be pretty. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take it. I'm sorry. Y'all can probably hear Bolt growling. I don't know what he's growling at. Fill in any gaps or spaces that you need. So I'm going to seal up the edge of the rope we made. Sorry, you guys. And this is going to be in the oven on 200 degrees for 20 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to, oh, he's barking because there's another little dog outside. So I'm going to use my scissors just to lift this up. That's what it's going to look like. I know it seems a little messy right now. And I want to make sure where if there's any paper towel laying down or sticking up, I should say, that appears to not have any glue on it, that I want to make sure I'm covering that. Even though I think it should be fine, I just want to make sure. So I'm going to sit that over to the side on a flat surface. And I'm going to pull this one back over, which was the first one we had. I'm going to cut a thinner piece of paper towel this time. And I'm cutting off camera. Because the paper towel is so long, it won't fit on the whole camera roll. So just a long, thin strip of paper towel.
think I'm gonna need a little bit more glue and water mixture too, but let's see. And then what we're doing is we're just twisting it. I want that piece of paper towel right there to roll down. So that's why I wet it. So now we're gonna twist it to the end. These are gonna be really pretty. Now again, you could make these clip on if they appear to feel heavy to you once you start mixing everything up or once it dries. So we shouldn't need any more. I could probably wet the other paper towel once I get it ready as well and then we'll have everything that we need. You're just fitting it around there like a mold. Where you see you have gaps or sparse spaces, go ahead and fill that in now with any excess tissue that you have. Now we could make this look like metal. That's what the lady did um, who I watched, so I'm not sure what colors I'm going for yet. I'm trying to decide if I wanna go for summer colors or if I wanna go for Southwestern, which I feel like I've done so many times already. I'm not sure if I wanna go for animal print. I just don't know. But guess what? While it's baking, we have plenty of time to decide, right? If we want a metal look, if we want turquoise, I mean, there's so many things you could do with this. And you may think, well, who's gonna buy that? Who pay for that? Give me a break. If they can put a banana on the wall and call it art, then you can make whatever you want out of toilet paper and cardboard. And it is art and call it statement jewelry. If cauliflower can be a pizza crust, I saw that somewhere, right? <laughs> then this can be what we want it today. So I'm just gonna I'm making sure to put the edges down where the tissue connected. I don't want any issues. And then of course, we're gonna seal this with some Mod Podge as well. Okay. Pretty. That one's going off to the side too. They look like cookies. So now this one, I'm trying to bend, I was bending backwards because this thing's gonna lay flat. It's not gonna give me a hard time. I'm in charge here, right? <laughs> so let's wet up some more. I'm sorry, no, I'm gonna wet up tissue. That's not what we want. Let's cut another piece of paper towel roll. And I should have measured it to the last one, but I'm just gonna try to eyeball it to make sure that they are symmetrical. So of course, I'm just twisting. Twist, 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 twist. I can't tell you how much better I feel after sitting here making jewelry with you guys. I've had stress on my shoulders. I've been having just not trouble breathing, but you ever just try to catch your breath and like, I just need a good deep breath. <sighs> That's how I feel with you guys today. God is good. So thank you for being here with me on today. Okay. All right, so. I love how easy this is to work with. Now, let me make sure they're looking the same as the other one. I just want to make sure on the end that I'm twisting it so it lays in there. And I think I'm going to need another piece of tissue because down here at the bottom is looking a little sparse. I'm thinking I'm going to need some more mache stuff. And you can always wet your hands if things are getting too sticky. Right? It's just like working with dough, believe it or not. Okay. 
Okay. I'm just trying to make sure when I'm putting it over here that it's looking matched up like the other earring and it's not sitting up in any way. It's already starting to dry too, which is pretty cool. So I have the oven on two, again on 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna sit it on some tin foil to bake in the oven. I'm just making a little bit more for down here. I'm gonna let Bo out so he hushes because he just is so disrespectful. He could care less that we're on here recording a video. I'll be right back. Okay, you guys. Also, if you don't have this ugly oven pan that goes in the bottom, it's like a roaster in your oven. I wonder, can you even cook? I don't know. <laughs> just kidding. Right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna ball up a couple of pieces of the tissue because we wanna make a centerpiece um, where like some beads can hang out. So we wanna do that, but I Okay, so what I did was I mixed up some more of our glue mixture because we need to do the centerpiece for the necklace. So this is a little thinner than the last mixture that I had. We really just wanna ball it up, okay? And what we're gonna do I don't want to take this off of here, is we're just going to sit it in the center like a ball like that. And then I'm going to use the end of a paintbrush to just put a center like a dip. Basically, we just want to flatten it out. We want it to have texture. But we also want it to have a raised effect. So if we wanted to put beads or something in the center, like a center stone, that we could do that, okay? So that's what it should look like. And then over here, I think I got glue in my nose. I wanted to put a little bit more um, of our Mod Podge paper mixture because it seemed like just a little thin. So, I wanted to put a little bit more here, just to be sure, and then a little bit more there, because I don't want to see any of the cardboard, okay? So, as it starts to dry, you'll see that it thins a little bit, and so you'll want to go fill in where you feel like you need extra, okay? I feel like I need some over there too. So let's just do one more piece over there. And it's like I said, it's already starting to dry. So be sure you have everything like you want it, right? I think I want one more piece over here. In there and then I noticed that the edge of the rope just seems like it wants to sit up a little bit so I'm gonna cover that up because remember we remember we're painting anyway so I don't want anything giving me issues later on and now we're gonna put this in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. I really wanted to do something that kind of set up in the center a little bit, but I'm just nervous that it might make those too heavy, so I'm not gonna do that. Maybe we can play it by ear after they dry. So let's go put this in the oven. I'm probably gonna put it in there for 30 minutes, even though it's already starting to dry, um, but just to be on the safe side that they're super extra crispy. Let me just do one more dab of do right there. This is where you like stop touching stuff. Start taking stuff apart by yourself, right? I wanna make sure my earrings are the same size because once they dry, we can't make them any bigger. 
right or smaller so make sure everything is like you want it be back I didn't take into consideration as whether or not these would stick that side still seems a little soft that one's not ready yet these are and that one's getting a little dark my hands look just as wrinkled. Can we say emotion? So they unstuck, unstuck relatively easily. I just think I want to cook this one a little bit longer. Um, and they're very light. So that's a good thing. So I think I'm going to cook them a little while longer. And I'm going to turn up the temperature just so it goes faster. Okay, so look how these turned out. These look like cookies. My daddy just asked me what these were. So that's how they look on the back. My mom is trying to figure out what I'm doing. I'm talking to a video. She's so sweet. She's over there to in the corner. So this is the centerpiece. Don't these look like cookies? Or mommy don't these look like cookies? <laughs> Toilet paper. And I'm getting ready to turn into a pendant for jewelry. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> she said, oh my goodness. So it looks like a cookie, but look, it's hard. And it's I left it in the oven though for over. It's been in there for over an hour. Plus I sped it up to 350 made mixed it with glue and water oh, okay. mm -hmm. so we're gonna paint these now but i'm trying to decide what color we're gonna paint them so what we'll do is probably just start out with a black base and then go from there okay so we're just gonna use a white brush and just start smathering the paint on This is where I wish I had, I think Caleb has some gloves, my 19 year old. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna get the black paint all over the place. Cause after we get this painted, you're not even gonna be able to tell that this is toilet paper, right? And white glue, it's gonna be really pretty. And I'm glad that the earrings stay really light so that they're not heavy when we go to add the dangles and whatnot or whatever beads we're gonna add. Okay, so now just make sure you get your paint all in the little crevices. And then what we're gonna do is use a gold and a silver paint after this dries to um, do like a wash. And then we'll figure out the beads from there. Okay, so look, I got smart because I don't feel like getting all that black paint off on my hands and fingers. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn it over and make sure we paint the back. Y'all can probably hear my kids up there laughing. I love to hear their laughter. I tell them all the time, when y'all get older and grow up and move out, boy, I'm going to be so sad. But Marvin Price, and I'm sure we'll figure out something to do <laughs> and have a good time. So, anywho, so we're just going to go through making sure we get all the crevices, everything covered. That's pretty. Look, you can't even tell. It's just a really pretty medallion. And we're going to sit that over there to dry. I love how hard it turned because it gives some weight to it. So then it doesn't seem like, you know, if you go to sell your jewelry and stuff, what's awesome is you could sell this as recycled um, materials or earth-friendly materials because it's paper. And your paints are non-toxic. So really cool. And people love art jewelry, so... How cool is it that they won't even be able to tell what the materials are? Okay, awesome. So they are not completely dry, but look how pretty. So they're like charcoal pucks, or like burnt burgers off the grill. So now what we got was we got some metallic silver and metallic gold paint. And what we're gonna do is we just wanna do a wash, right? So I'm gonna do my fan brush and basically we're gonna wipe some of the paint off and we're just gonna sweep over, right? Cause we wanna give it like a brushed metal look.
right? Because again, we're making statement jewelry. And I'm thinking that I want to hang these beads from it. I got those from the Dollar Tree. I'm not exactly sure yet. So now let's do the medallion or the middle piece, the um, pendant. Pretty. So now let's do some gold, right? And what we want to do with the gold is just kind of dot it on there. And again, you could use your glitter paints on these, but we want it to have the look of kind of like a faux metal. And I want dangles. Like if I can, I'm gonna drill holes in here because they're hard enough to actually drill holes. I saw where somebody used like, uh, um, you know, one of those wall punches you can use to put stuff on your calendar on the wall. So look how pretty that is. Of course, we're gonna do the back as well, but just look at the pretty metallic that goes with that, that's pretty. And then of course we have glitter paint. So if we wanted to, we could do that as well. And then we have some rose gold paint somewhere. I don't know where my rose gold paint is. I have to ask Miriam if she had it because she actually had my silver paint. Miriam, did you have my rose gold paint too? Did you have the rose gold paint too? Okay. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go rinse my brush off. And because I'm considering using these, I'm not sure yet, the other packets are these, which would probably look better. So we may go with that and figure out how we're gonna dangle these down and hang them down. So. They're looking really pretty. I want to be able to paint the back as well. And again, these aren't heavy. They're going to make a nice lightweight earring. No, not that one. That's one of them, but there should be a pink, like a rose gold. For now, we're gonna let it dry. I'm gonna go see if I can hunt down my rose gold paint, because all of a sudden she showed up with this one. I'm like, uh, what you got on my paints? Okay, be back. Okay, so I found it. It was out in the garage. Look how pretty that is. So I'm not necessarily sure that it'll really go with those or not. Mm. I don't know. I guess maybe because there's some copper beads in there. Let's see. We can cover it up with black if we don't like it. Oop. It's really pretty too, let's see. So let's dot some of it off. And we're just adding dimension, pretty much. And that's what I like about the um, tissue when it dried. It literally gave it like texture, a lot of texture.
And then that rose gold color gave it like some dimension. So I like that. Now we just gotta figure out how we're gonna hang everything. And then in any areas where I feel like maybe I got too much paint like over here and I wanna put the black back in, you just put some black back in. Okay, so if you feel like you took too much of the black out, just put some black in. Y'all, I forgot to tell y'all a movie I watched. I saw some good movies. We were on our way to Hawaii back in December. I don't know why this is a random thought that just came to my mind. The Green Knight. I was so excited to see that movie. Can we say terrible? That movie was awful. No offense, Green Knight, if y'all hear this movie or hear this video. <laughs> I don't think they will. But it was, I'm like, y'all should have gone back to the drawing board on this one. So pretty. So we're going to let that dry. Leave those alone. And then we're going to determine how we are going to hang our beads from this fabulous set of earrings and necklace pendants. Made out of what? Toilet paper. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the back of these and then they can be drawn so we can be planning out our design for the front. I don't know why I dolloped that in black paint, so. We're just gonna do like a marble and a spackling kind of design back here. And just use up all your paint that you have left over. Probably shouldn't need to get any more out. Well, maybe I might need some more gold. Very pretty. So now let's make sure we get a touch of everything on the sides. Just so everything has some color to it. Very pretty. So now, make sure everything has some paint. I'm gonna let all of so this now, dry, and then we're definitely gonna dry. drill the holes. This is where you're gonna need your beads. Yeah. You're gonna need then your fishing and wire or any and type of beading wire drill, that you wanna use. We're also gonna down. use some head Thank pins and some eye pins to connect the dangles that I wanna see on here. And we're gonna go and get the necklace. Um, headbands that we're going to be using as well so i'm just touching everything up for now and then in part two we're going to finish it up and zhuzh it up and make it completely gorgeous and the statement jewelry that we're all known for